welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Tonight, we're doing the next installment of the KZ re Rebuild Project, where we're gonna install our new parts and reassemble our bottom end. So let's get to it. So we've ordered our new lay shaft here, and then we're gonna transfer all our gears over from this one and put them onto this one. So they've sent us out a new thrust washer and a new circlip, and this is the new style bearing, okay? It's in two halves, and that has been made because you can see here on the new lay shaft, we've, the circlip groove is raised up. It's not set down into the shaft and that was probably the cause of the breakage in the first place. So this is the new lay shaft. This is the clutch actuating system. You've got a lever here that operates and the shaft just pushes the clutch shoes on and off. Right, so we've got our old part here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull them off and lay the parts out in order so as not to miss anything when I go when it all goes back together. Because there is some little thrust washers here, you can see there's one in there. Okay, and you want to make sure that they're all in the I mean it's pretty logical how it goes, but uh, if you're just doing it for the first time, um, maybe just take it easy, pull it apart slowly but surely, and then you should have no more problems. All right, so now we've got our parts laid out. It's just a matter of reversing the process and sliding them all back together on the new shaft with the new circlips. And then we're ready to start installing them into the crankcases and assemble the bottom end of the engine. We're gonna put our new bearing on, which is in two pieces. That replaces the old one piece bearing. And then we're just gonna slip number two gear on like so. We'll get a bit of oil and oil that while we go on. I want a bit of, you don't want to put anything together dry, you know, it'll take a while for the oil from the gearbox to splash up in there. And it's only a needle roller, they don't need a lot of oil, but still. Next up is the thrust washer. Okay, and then we've got our new circlip. Now, if you've been watching our other videos, we've normally got two edges on a circlip, a sharp and a round. The sharp's gonna go in the direction of thrust, which is this way. So we're just gonna install that onto the shaft, push it along clip it up hard onto into the groove. Just have to rotate the gear and you can see here, we just stretch the circlip. So we had a bit of drama trying to get the uh, circlip up on into the groove. So I've just grabbed a pin punch, the front of the circlip's on over here and then the back is sitting up. So I'm just gonna give it a go to tapping it on up over the chamfer there. It's almost there. I'll just tap this last bit on. Boom. And perfection. Right, you can see there's not a lot of clearance there between the circlip and the dogs of the gear. This is what drives the gears. And uh, this spline will drive at the third and fourth gear cluster. And when you slide, when you select the gears, the, the dogs mesh, and then that's what sh creates the drive, otherwise it just free spins. So next up we've got the third and fourth gear cluster. It's pretty straightforward, we're just gonna slip them onto the shaft. Now we have one more circlip that's gotta go on here. So we've got our little circlip here and our circlip plies. You just stretch it over the shaft, slide it on, and chuck it into the groove. Right. Next up, we're gonna install the fifth gear and it's a uh, little thrust washer there. You can see that it's already on. So just slide that guy on there like that. And last but not least, hole number six. And the spline just goes like that. Okay, next up we're gonna install the two shafts and the gearbox and the gears into the crankcases. So let's get to it. Okay, so grab your two shafts 
in your hand obviously you can't just tip them one way or all the gears fall off and then you've just got to try to um, balance it as you put it into the crankcase so it might be a bit hard to see on the camera but um, I'm just trying to get those down in there without dropping all the gears off the end of the shafts that one's in that one's in right that wasn't too bad now was it okay perfect okay next up we've got the selector forks and we're just going to put that guy down in his little groove like that and move him out of the way and then get this little guy down in his groove Right out. and we're going to put our little pin through both and then just move it out of the way because we've got to get our selector drum down inside before we put the pins through and we get this little guy and we've got to take him off the shaft put him on his um on his little gear set there move him out of the way chuck the pin back in him right and then we've got the this is the drum so as it rotates it's got a ratchet one down so obviously you go one down then one two three four five six back up okay and that's how you your, your sequential sequential shifter on your motorbike engines work and then what we're going to do now we've got all that in is just move the gear sets around until we get these pins to line up with the uh with this uh um, select a drum and then we should be good to go so we've got our <laughs> screwdriver and zip tie here and that's holding the the ratchet of the gear selector out of the way so we could slide it in easy otherwise we would have had to disassemble it and the spring flies out so it's just a little shortcut now what we're going to do is we're just going to put the selectors into the drum by just moving them around you might have to jiggle the gear set hold your tongue to the left so they speak <laughs> and once you can do that and we can push them into the there we go boom and then jiggle it and then the pins slide down into their home in the crankcase now that's the gearbox all assembled ready to go and what we can do is we can rotate the and it'll give you a bit of an idea you can see the gears moving and that's how it all all works when you shifting your gearbox engine around. So now we can take this out and that will slot in there, bang. Right, so that's gonna stop that from moving. So next up, we've got our crankshaft assembly that's gonna go in. This is the ignition side, it's got the taper on it. This is the um, sort of the output shaft of the engine. It's got the primary ge gear on it and a little circlet. So that's gonna go down here. Okay, so we're just gonna install that. This is pretty straightforward, we just Slip him down there, just real gentle. Boom. Right. That's your crankshaft assembly done. Now what we've got to do is apply our gasket sealant to the other side of the crank case and then assemble that and we should be good to go. Okay, so next up we've got our aerosol gasket sealer. So we're going to apply that to the crank case. So if, what I do here is Spray some carbon cleaner onto a rag and use that as a primer. It just kills off any um, of the old seal if there's any leftovers on the on the surface, and um, that gives it a bit of a bit of a cleanup. Watch out for the the fumes of the carburetor cleaner. It's pretty toxic. Not a huge fan. Right so once you've done that, grab your aerosol. Oops. Ching ching knocking everything over here um, your gasket stuff righto and then you just put a little bit here a little bit there just like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to use our finger and just rub that all in because if you put too much you're just going to spray out everywhere into your engine if you put too little, you're going to get some leaks. So I always put a little bit too much on and then just clean it all up with my finger. And then we're laughing. 
and then it's just a matter of um, using your finger and smearing it out and making sure that, that you've got good even coverage and then just cleaning it up. So we'll just do that and then I'll show you the next step. So there you have it. You've got your silicon everywhere all over here. You just run your finger around to wipe off any excesses. Um, and then what that does too is you can give it a bit of a visual inspection to see if you've missed anything. You do get silicon all over your hands and all over your bench. But you just wipe that up and uh, it should be all good. All right, so now we're ready to assemble the cases. So it's just a matter of a bit of a balancing act and holding your tongue to the left to make sure that you can get this on with the minimum of fuss. So the first up, the output shaft bearing is hitting the sh uh, output shaft, and I'm just giving that a jiggle there. There we go. He's on there, and then if you come over here, I'm just gonna jiggle that. It can be a little bit of a bit of a handful sometimes. Remove that. That's easy. That's just the washer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a soft hammer, give it a few taps, and that is that. So you don't want to belt them together if they get stuck, well, just a little bit of vibration can help move it down onto the dowel pins, but you don't want to just get the biggest hammer you've got and wind it up with a double armor and start smacking your engine together because it's stuck, right? That's probably, there's a reason for why it's not going together. Now this here is the um, gear selector, so don't worry about that. We're going to slide that in from the other side. Anyway, so that's everything in there. Double check it before you put it all together in case you've forgotten something. Now we're going to put the screws in. Over here we've got our crankcase bolts all laid out and what's going to happen is uh, they're all different lengths now what happens is that they should all when you put them into the case be the exact height out of from the crankcase so there's different lengths so if you put the short one in the long hole it'll go all the way in down to the head of the bolt and if you put the long one in the short hole it'll be sticking up way, way too far way more than all the others and that's an indicator that you've got a wrong bolt in a wrong hole Rightio, so what I was talking about here is this is a long bolt and it's got the same amount of head sticking out of the crankcase as the short one. So if we were to flip them out, whoop, too far there. And then this one, that's the long and the short. Now if you put that in the wrong, it would be sticking out way too far and that one would be sticking down. So with crankcases, normally if there's different length bolts, if you get one around the wrong way, it'll look something like that. But uh, this one, everything went together smooth. So now I've, I've roughly done up all the bolts with the, the battery operated the rattle gun or screw gun. But there you can see there that they're not tight, it's just sort of taking most of the slack out of the bolts. So I go around with the five 
T-bar and just give them a bit of a, more of a nip up. Right, and then last but not least, what I'm going to do is get the torque wrench. I'm going to set that to 10 Newton meters. I'm going to start in the center and work in a H pattern all the way out to the outside. So one, two, do 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 do, do and then do 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 do. Okay. Okay, last but not least, we've screwed it all together, torqued up all the bolts, and now we're just gonna go and clean up all, any excess silicon off the crankcase. So there you have it, KZ2 gearbox assembly, check. That's how you do it. Get the crankcase back together, crankshafts in, gearboxes together. We're ready to rock and roll. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button if you wanna follow along, if you're loving this series. Give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, check us out at Facebook and Instagram at Power Republic or www.powerrepublic.com.au. Grab yourself a t-shirt and a hat. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.